teenagers continue to be some of the youngest victims of gun violence in Philadelphia. Uh, just yesterday, we told you about a 15-year-old, Antonio Walker uh, Jr., was gunned down as he was walking down Pentridge Street. That's, uh, by the way, he was walking with his cousin. This was in King Sesson. He was the uh, second 15-year-old to die from gunfire in the past few weeks. So, uh, the young lady, you know, in her car with her brother, just a teenager, her brother's 20. This was on February 23rd. Somebody fired shots into the car, striking them both in the head. Just in 10th grade. Died a week later. And Philadelphia Police Commissioner Danielle Outlaw released a statement yesterday on youth gun violence saying that she was both saddened and outraged to learn of several violent incidents involving some of our city's youth. Here's the thing, we often see these scenes, we report on them and you hear about them, but rarely do we get to know the victims who have lost their lives to gun violence. They are more than just their names mm -hmm. or statistic. That is until now. There's a new exhibit called Souls Shot Portrait Project, and it's hoping to change this. So Steve Keeley is now live at Logan Library, showing us some of these portraits and telling us about the stories behind them. Yeah, a lot of coincidences here. In fact, the first coincidence today, we're reporting on the latest murder. And then here we are at a scene where I recognize the names because I had covered the murders of some of the people here portrait uh, now. And uh, wow, it's very powerful. And um, Laura's here. She works with the group I was talking about in a couple of my live shots today, uh, as the most of the people here called the Obituary Project, who uh, put more to it than just a statistic or a number. And look at this portrait that Laura did. This is Kenyon, and Laura ended up painting a portrait of him, but she got to know him because she had to talk to him because her last portrait was his brother. So the family lost two people. That's, wow. Yeah, it was really devastating. Um, I met with uh, Sonia Dixon, the grandmother, and uh, she's just, you know, the mother was too distraught to to really participate in this project. So it was Sonia who contacted us. And I was able to meet Kenyon, who went by Chip, uh, like you said, and learning about his brother. So it was, this was extra devastating for me as well to hear that he was also, also killed. But what, what we do in this project, and I'm, um, we, like you said, we're like the uh, Philadelphia Obituary Project, we learn about the lives of these people, what their lives were like, and memorialize them and humanize them in a way that is just, they just don't get that from, from other media. And uh, yeah, and the, the artists all meet with the families and form, form kind of a bond to be able to create these portraits. Because it's very difficult to, to make a portrait of someone who's not with us. And one of the strengths of our project too is that the artists are not, they're given free reign to interpret these lives the way they will. There's very few artists that are actually, you know, specifically portrait artists. Was it even more difficult to paint somebody that you had known for the first time? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and interestingly, when I, when I met him, he was very, you know, he didn't smile. He was, you know, because we were talking about his brother, who was his best friend, too. And he was just clearly so upset, he could barely talk about it. And my impression of him from that moment versus when I sat down with Sonia again and his, and his um, uh, partner and his two daughters, his two darling daughters, he was, he was a very ebu ebullient, joyful man, um, just a whole different person. He was a singer, a great cook, is loved by everyone in the neighborhood. And <sighs> so it was, to me, it was really illustrates how, how gun violence doesn't affect one person. It just well, sends ripples out that are, are very painful. All right, well, wonderful work doing this. And um, I don't know how a parent goes on to live after a child is killed. But uh, Shanoa McDonald, another one of the artists, painted a portrait of this young man, Niam. And Shanoa, you got to know Niam, and I asked you, why is he wearing that crown? We saw Mike on the show wearing a crown this week, but uh, there's a meaning behind that crown. 
Yes, I learned that Naim, after his death, his organs were donated, and they were donated to seven different people. So each point on his crown, uh, it symbolizes one of those individuals. And I walked into the library with Kim, his mother, and I, I asked her, boy, he's kind of young. Um, a lot of people sometimes don't ever think there'll be an organ donor when they fill that out. And he took it off his license. Yes. Or because why? Because you wanted it. I wanted him to take it off. Because you didn't want your I son to die. I didn't want my son to be, to die. I didn't want to think about that. And we had that conversation and we made a deal. If he took it off his license, if something was to happen to him, I had to promise him that I would let the doctors know he was an organ donor, in which I did. So he thought something might happen to him someday, and if it does, he wanted to make sure his organs went on. Yes. So you look at that crown, and you know, night and my, uh, lives on in seven people. Yes. Yes. Alex, Mike. Yeah. Wow. Seven people are alive because of him. Mm-hmm. It's there's Beautiful something even exhibit. more powerful about a portrait, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's done instead of just a, just a photograph. I mean, photograph is great too, but it's in the time that was taken to do yeah. that. And to get uh, to but this them. is necessary. We want to know their stories. We need to know their mm-hmm. stories to show. I mean, even losing one life is too much. They're not just numbers. Yeah. Come right back. 